In today's show, we're going to be talking Detroit Pistons and their fantasy value for the upcoming season. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. So we recorded earlier with Kuka Hill, the host of the Locked On Pistons podcast from a local perspective on this Pistons team. Let's look at their fantasy values. Let's look at what's happened with uh, current ranks on Yahoo, ESPN fan tracks and things that can go right, things that can go wrong, all that stuff that we do on all of these fantasy preview shows. So let's get straight into talking about that right now. And let's start by looking at the schedule for the Detroit Pistons. And they have a very, very good schedule. One of the best in the entire league. 56 quality games. It's huge. That's the third most in the entire NBA. So when you're talking Pistons guys that you can get at discounts or fringy type guys, Killian Hayes, Isaiah Stewart, Sadiq Bey, Jeremy Grant even, they don't have top 20 players on this team. So getting these guys with this high... A high quality game number and low back to back number, which the Pistons might be tanking again. I think that Cade Cunningham is going to be too good, much like Luca was in his rookie season. Cade is not Luca. I'm not saying Cade is Luca. All right. So I said this on one other show. So hey, Cade thinks Cade's Luca. No, I don't think Cade is Luca. What I'm saying is that the way Luca played as a rookie, Dallas was able to be you know, more competitive than they were the previous season, significantly more. And I think Cade might be able to keep the Pistons maybe even in the mix for that play-in scenario. If he takes a step, Bay takes a step, Hayes remains healthy, um, uh, Grant doesn't get shut down at the end of the year, Kelly Linick provides the spacing, they could yeah, maybe not in that play-in mix, but also not in the situation where they are the worst record team in the NBA. I think that's a possibility. So they've got 12 back-to-backs, they've got 56 quality games, two great parts there of their schedule. In a default Yahoo playoffs, they have a 3-4-4, 11-game playoffs, pretty good. And in my default playoffs, they've got 10 games, also pretty good, a 3-4-3. So one of the best out of the teams that we're covered so far, one of the best schedule profiles of anybody. High-quality games, low back-to-backs, pretty strong playoff schedule. That's all really good for this team. We hope that things don't go in the shitter and they don't start sitting blokes like they did last year. But remember, the guys that they sat were Mason Plumley, Corey Joseph. Fingers crossed they, they sit Corey Joseph, Jesus Christ. Uh, Corey Joseph, um, yeah, Jeremy Grant. But let's hope that they keep playing them and giving those minutes to the young guys. And their team is all basically young guys outside of Jeremy Grant and Kelly Linick, who aren't particularly old. So I got a little bit of faith for the pit. Not, I don't think they're making the playoffs. I don't think they're making the play in. But instead of being 14th or 15th, I think they might be 12th or 11th. You know, taking that step forward. And that's good for fantasy value, and it's good for hopefully we're not having that problem of them uh, of them sitting blokes down the stretch of the season. Let's look at some pressure points. Yeah, what can change my projections? Well, kids, cover your ears. Dwayne Casey's fuckery, really, is what can affect this. We saw last season the absolute nonsense of Corey Joseph playing minutes, and not only playing minutes, but taking the ball out of the hands of players who needed the ball to develop. Will he do it again? I was excited. They cut Corey Joseph. Nothing against Corey Joseph. Fine. Good bloke. Good player. Solid enough. Pistons didn't need him. They cut him and re-signed him. Are they, they have got enough guards that he doesn't have to play a single minute. My worry is he plays 27 of them a night and cuts into Hayes and Lee and Jackson and Diallo and the other Jackson and even Cunningham because Casey believes fraudulently that he's a good defender or that he's this great offensive player. Maybe he's a good teammate. Don't need to play him. That's my worry, is that Killian Hayes plays 22 minutes a night so Corey Joseph can play more. That's a worry. Cade Cunningham, coming into college, he wasn't thought of as a great shooter. At Oklahoma State, he shot unbelievably. In Summer League, he looked pretty impressive shooting it as well. 
step backs, hard quality shots, yeah, self-created pull-up threes. But if that doesn't happen, and if he's not a good shooter, um, not saying they'll cut his minutes because they won't, but he might have lower minutes earlier to start the season. I think he'll be fine. I think he starts opening night and plays 30 straight away and then pushes to 33, 34. But if the shooting's not there, and he can't develop the assist game straight away, which I think he might struggle a little bit with early on. We've seen that through summer league and through college as well. If the shooting's not there, then his value is not particularly great. I think he could easily have a top 40 season, but he also might not be top 90. And his draft value is sort of smack bang in the middle there. Back to Dwayne Casey's fuckery. Kelly Linux roll. Imagine they start Kelly Linux over Isaiah Stewart. You reckon you'll hear about it from me? You might a little bit. Now, I like Kelly Linux fit. I like Kelly Linux as a player. I have liked Kelly Linux as a player for a long time. I like his fit on this team. I like the spacing that he provides for Cade, for Sadiq, for Grant, for Hayes. I still think that you need to see what happens with uh, Isaiah Stewart out there. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. I'd like to see how that works. And it's not like you're putting Isaiah Stewart with a non-shooting four or three, because you're not, because Grant's a shooter, and Bay can shoot. Bay is more of a shooter than Grant, but you know what I mean. Cunningham's a shooter. Hayes is not shooting the ball well, but he takes the shots. So you can afford to have that one non-shootery type guy out there in Isaiah Stewart. Now, Linick is an excellent shooter. He can have five shooters out there. But if they play him 30 minutes and keep Stewart at 23, 24, then I will be ropeable. I'll be pretty pissed. And it will impact Stewart's value. There's no doubt about that. So that's the worry we have. I, I think common sense will prevail. And Isaiah will play 26 to 30 a night. And Callie will play 22 to 26 a night. But there is room for that to go all over the place. And then there could be changes in how I project Jeremy Grant's usage. He was tasked with too much last year. Cunningham in, healthy Killian Hayes, Kelly Olenek. All these guys should take some of that load away from Jeremy Grant. Giggity. But what if it doesn't? What if his usage stays sky high? And then that impacts Cade and it impacts Killian and it impacts Sadiq. And then it impacts Jeremy and his efficiency. Or he drops way off and becomes more of a third offensive option, Jeremy does. And the value, like, so he's value to me. I don't think we look at the end of the season as real. I don't think we look at the, the start of last season as real. His role to me is still a very big question mark, despite what we saw from Jeremy Grant last season. So how that all plays out is really going to be a big question mark and how he gets distributed or the shots get distributed in this offense with a legitimate bona fide future superstar in Cade Cunningham there and where Jeremy Grant fits in with that if you want to fit in at the office and not have to be embarrassed by sweat stains and you have hyperhidrosis, excessive sweating, sweat block is for you. Doctor created, doctor recommended. This is stronger than most clinical antiperspirants out there. You get the product and it can last up to seven days, amazingly. You've seen it be tested on firefighters on Rachel Ray. You heard me talk about the benefits of sweat block. They've also got their dry shirt guarantee as well. So if it doesn't work, get your money back. And you can get sweat block at sweatblock.com. By using our promo code LOCKEDON, and that saves you 20%. That's a lot. Why would you bother going to help Amazon get their money and, and you know fuel Jeff Bezos' phallic rockets when you can go and get 20% off at sweatblock.com? You can also get them at CVS too. But put it on at night, wipe your pits, wake up the next morning, have a wash, go to work, and you're covered for up to seven days. Sweatblock is the product that you never know, never knew that you needed. Guys, this might be a familiar scenario to you. You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, and you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and then you borrow your mate's login so you can get that other good stuff. Well, I wanted to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle, and a great way to finally get your TV together, and it's called Direct TV Stream. And it brings you live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes. And no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Okay. Let's look at some other things now for this Pistons team. And let's look at breakout candidates. And I've got a couple of guys on this list. I'm going to have Killian Hayes as a potential breakout. And I'm going to have Isaiah Stewart as a potential breakout. I think Stewart is more guaranteed breakout versus potential breakout. We'll talk about him a little bit more later on. But I'm really excited to see what he can do. I will maintain my, my comments on him. I do not think that he is a franchise cornerstone game-changing center. 
If you have an opportunity to get an upgrade at center, you take it. Can he be a solid enough center who maybe tops out at being a top 12 NBA center in his career? Maybe. I think there's still too much limitation in his game, but he's solid enough. You got him, you use him, you work him through. That's all fine. All right. Great value. Killian Hayes was really bad last year. The hip injury killed him. He lost confidence. He came back. He showed flashes. I thought he defended at a very high level. I thought his passing was very good. And I think the same thing sh showed in Summer League. The problem is the shot. It is way off. He can't hit threes. He's losing confidence in it. He was a, a guy that has shot well in the past in Europe. His year before being drafted, he had poor three-point percentage, but really good pull-up three-point percentage and really good free throws. I think it is there for him. He's a guy that I think screams Darius Garland as a rookie who struggled with injury in his rookie season and then comes in second year and has a big blow-up. So I'm looking at Killian, who should, fingers crossed, Dwayne Casey ridiculousness to the side, play 30 minutes a night. If he starts to hit his threes, he can average five or six assists, sharing the ball with Cade Cunningham. He can get one and a half steals. If he had a 1.9 steal season, I wouldn't be shocked. And maybe average 12 points with two threes. Hopefully. I think there is potential in that. You look for your guys to take flyers on with last picks who are breakout candidates. You're looking at second-year point guards. You're looking at guys who are point guards who play 30 minutes a night who have got the framework of a good fantasy game. And that framework is getting good assists, getting good steals, and a potential to be a good shooter. Not there yet, of course, but the potential to be there. So I really look at Killian as a very solid last-round pick. Very solid. And if it doesn't work out and he's shit, and if Corey Joseph's playing those minutes over him, move on. But the dude's played like 20 games. And he already, already can defend and pass at an NBA level. Already can do that. I wouldn't be surprised to see a gigantic leap. I also wouldn't be surprised to see if the shot doesn't come on at all this year. I wouldn't be surprised, but that's the point of it. You're looking at a breakout guy who the everything's there. The runway's there. The path is there for him to become that guy that does jump up. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And you don't have to take him too high to get that value to come in in your fantasy draft sets. Look at fantasy draft sets. Look at sleepers. Um, I'll throw this one out there now because if you're drafting on fan tracks, you've got to scroll way down. Cade's at 760. They need to update that shit. Fan tracks, you're probably listening. Update it. Fix your rankings. Cade shouldn't be at 760. He's never going to get drafted there, but you have to scroll down to find him. So if you want him, he's down there. Kelly Lennox at 124 on Yahoo. Now, in the mock draft that I did yesterday, he went at 71, which to me is insanity. But I think he can be on that 100 marks. 124, there's a little bit of value there for Linick. He was amazing in Houston. He's not going to have that same role. But yeah, 124, he's just found money. The depressed penis, Sadiq Bay is at 144 on ESPN. I talked with Koo earlier today about, I think there's somewhat, and so does he, limited upside in Sadiq. But I think he beats that number. That's yeah, round 11, round 12, that's round 12 type stuff. I think he beats that number really easily. So I'll happily take uh, a Sadiq Bay. Yeah, much earlier than that. Where where we're looking at, at Sadiq, we're looking at him as a yeah round 10, 110 to one hundred and twenty sort of guy in category leagues, and about the same in points leagues. Yeah, I think there's real value in him. Elf Stewart is at one hundred and twenty one on ESPN and one thirty two on Fantrax. He was at one hundred and twenty on Yahoo, but because of the um, rankings updates, he's coming to eighty two. I still think there's value in Isaiah Stewart at eighty two. But there is amazing value for him on ESPN at 121 and Fantrax at 132. To me, he's a guy that you can look at in the seventh round because so much when we look at, at drafts, and that's that goes for points leagues and category leagues, that centers are gone. Valanchunas is gone. Nurkic is gone. Um, Jaron Jackson is gone. Porzingis is gone. So many centers are off the board in that area, and you go, well, who am I left with? Am I going to have to end up taking Steven Adams? Like, it, you get into a real... It makes some plumbly. Like, you get into a real issue. And I think that Stewart... I think he can actually do better than, you know, pick six. I think he can be top 50 if he played 32 a night. He probably won't do that, though. But 28 a night, 27 a night is realistic. And there is good value in him. And you can see Yahoo's bumped him to 82, but he's ADP still 116, so it hasn't reflected yet. So there's still value there. While Killian Hayes at 225 on ESPN and 339 on Fantrax. I already discussed that. He's at 140 on Yahoo, which is absolutely fine. That's the area to take him. But the fact that he's outside that top 200 on Fantrax and on ESPN gives you a tremendous, a tremendous amount of value to be able to pick him in that last round. And even in 16 team leagues, be able to pick him late. And hopefully that returns the value. It might not, 
but hopefully it does return that value that you are that you are looking for. Let's look at bus, and you'll see some similar names here. Jeremy Grant is at 63 on Yahoo, which I think is a little bit of a bust. Last year, Grant was 72nd and played 34 minutes a night with that high usage. I think that could go down this year. It's not a horrible bust to take Jeremy Grant at 63. I don't, I'm not against it, but it means he needs to be significantly better than he was last year, and I'm not sure he will be. I think he might be worse. I think he's more of like a, a 75 to 80 or, or 90 sort of guy in, uh, in category leagues and in points leagues about the same. At fan tracks, Jeremy Grant's 48. That's insane. You don't do not take him in that spot at all. I think Cade Cunningham's an interesting one. He's at 83 on Yahoo, but he's at 58 on ESPN. And there is no way I, I think he can easily be a top 40 player. But it's probably a 20% chance of getting there. You, you do not take him at 58. Yahoo's got him at 83. I actually like that at 83. I think he's more of a guy that you're looking at between 65 and 80. So there is still real value in him. As I said, Fantrax got him at 760. But at 58, you lose that value. ESPN's also expecting Corey Joseph to be the 134th ranked player. Do not fall into the Corey Joseph trap. Do not draft him. If for some reason Dwayne Casey, Dwayne Casey's, and plays him big minutes, then sure, add him off the waiver wire. But no, no thank you. Uh, Josh Jackson's at 178 at ESPN. Literally, Josh Jackson may not play. They might run Joseph, Frank Jackson, Hamadou Diallo, and Saban Lee all ahead of Josh Jackson. So therefore, at 178, you don't want to take him in a 14-team league. And Fantrax at 87, get get out of here. What are you talking about? No way. You do not draft Josh Jackson in those areas. Well, Kelly Olenek, I talked about him being a sleeper on Yahoo. He's 16th on Fantrax. My guys, if you draft Kelly Olenek at number 16, just give it away. Just stop playing fantasy. It's no point. You're not, you shouldn't be out there doing that because that is ridiculous. Under no circumstance will Kelly Olenek be the 16th ranked player this year. It just will not happen. I very rarely give guarantees, but I guarantee you he will not be the 16th ranked player this season. Guarantee you 100%. Take it to the bank. Guaranteed. You can also take to the bank that Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. They have delicious flavors, and they're bringing out special ones all the time. But yeah, the tried and true ones. Cookies and cream. Coconut. Orange, salted caramel, mint brownie, fantastic flavors. And not only are these flavors delicious, but they are also good for you. They're healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories per bar, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. So not only do they taste like a candy bar, but they're good for you. They're protein bars. They're fantastic. Try a try box. Get a mixed box. You get all nine flavors, two of each, and you get to see exactly what I'm talking about. As soon as I finish recording this, I'm going down to grab a built Bar actually here. So I'm feeling a little bit hungry. And you can get about 15% off by using our code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. Get that at built.com and get yourself a box of Built Bar. L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCKED15, 15% off at built.com. Football is back. College football started. Pro football is about to begin. And the place to place your bets for football is bet online. Get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including... Online's biggest half-million-dollar NFL mega contest and the world's largest $200,000 NFL Survivor contest. Open now at Bet Online. Be sure also to take advantage of their opening day super promo. Make a bet on the opening game Thursday, September 9th. Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your bet will be refunded up to $25 for new customers who sign up using the promo code NFL100. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports from football, basketball, boxing, even your favorite Vegas casino game. So don't wait. Take advantage of all their offers for the 2021 season. BetOnline are your online sportsbook experts. Let's go now have a look at some deeper league flyers. Yeah, MC Hamadou Diallo, I think, is an interesting deep league guy. Now, I think he is horribly, horribly overrated in fantasy all the time. He has some really shitful percentages. He's a guy that people expect to do great things, and he doesn't. But he is still a guy that in a deep league, especially if you're in a points league, much more value in a points league, he's got value. They brought him back. He's got a good contract. Now he's going to be backing up Bay and Cunningham, no doubt about that. But there is still some deeper league value in Bay. And Saban Lee similarly. Now, I don't know what they do with Corey Joseph or Josh Jackson or Frank Jackson, but Lee they brought back, much like they did with Frank and Diallo. They signed him. I thought he showed some interesting passing flashes and defensive ability. His shooting is a question mark. But as a deeper league guy who 
hopefully he's able to take that job away from Corey Joseph at some point. He's just a name that you need to watch. I don't feel particularly confident about it, but he is just a name at this point that we need to watch for. That'll take us on to the last thing we're going to talk about here, and that's the rest of the players on this team. Frank Jackson, one of the worst passes you will ever see, but a solid shooter. And if he finds a rotation role ahead of Diallo, ahead of Josh Jackson, deeper leagues, he'll hit points. He'll get points and he'll hit threes. Seko Dumbaya, I do not think Siku is on this team. I think he is going to get traded very soon. That's just a gut feeling. I still sort of like Siku, but I am much, much lower on him than I was in the past. He just hasn't shown anything. His shot is still a massive work in progress. They signed Trey Lyles. He might be in the rotation, but he's got no value. Scooter Magruder they brought back. I have no idea why. Jill Lokafor will probably get waived, or if they trade Josh Jackson or, or Siku. They still need to make one roster decision on this team. They've got too many players. And then you've got Luca Garza and Chris Smith as their two two-way guys. I've had people tell me, Matt Garza's going to be the backup center here. He's going to be fantasy relevant. He is not. I'm telling you, he is not. Not only is he a two-way guy, but he cannot hang... Think Boba Majanovic, but worse offensively as well. No, actually, he's pretty good offensively, but he's, he's not that good. Anyway, he's not going to have that role. Don't get too hyped about Luca Garza. He was the 52nd pick for a reason. He's a two-way guy for a reason. There is still Stewart and Alinek ahead of him. And I just, I just don't see it for him. The guy to watch is Isaiah Livers because he could make Dumbaya and Lyles completely useless. And Livers could step in as a backup four and have a role. And if Grant gets hurt, step up. He is absolutely someone to watch. You're not drafting him anywhere, but he's one to watch. Chris Smith, I mentioned already, two-way guy, but he's recovering from an ACL. So we're not going to see too much of him this season. So in terms of values, I think we can get Cade. In, he's sort of that 70 or 60 to 80 type player. Isaiah Stewart, similarly. Grant's more a 75 to 85, 90 player. Alinek, 90 to 110. Bay in that 100 to 120 type zone. Hayes is a nice late round guy. And then you've got a mix of Joseph and Diallo and Josh Jackson and Frank Jackson and Saban Lee, who will all be interesting enough in deep league scenarios, but probably not guys we want to be counting on too much. That'll do it. Fourth show recorded today. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And you'll never miss an episode if you follow this podcast. Apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, the Odyssey app. Leave reviews, leave ratings, and on YouTube, give it a thumbs up, leave your comments below, subscribe, notification bell. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.